And now we got to talk about the climate. Okay. And I apologize if I am sort of tactically dooming you all. But I think it's very necessary that even on channels like mine, where I'm just a goofy clown, that once in a while we move from comedy to tragedy. Because if not, then we're missing out on an entire... Um, well, I would be doing you a disservice. I would be doing you a major disservice. So why are we talking about the climate today? We've been in this climate nonsense, right? Why are we talking about the climate today? The reason we're talking about the climate today is because a new report was released today. And you all will know that I... What's that? I, whatever. Oh, oh, am I going to get corrected over here from the fawn department? Thanks, uh, producer. Thanks. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, this report, a lot of people have been known as coming. This is called the IPCC AR6 Climate Change 2021, the physical science basis. Uh, and this was a, a massive UN-backed UN report that a lot of people have been knowing was going to come and uh, was going to be talked about uh, quite a lot. Um, and so we're going to read a little bit about it right now. Um, and we're going to look at the actual report, and then we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about what it means to doom. Should we, like, how, how do we manage all this doom? Because there is, it's not just a matter of people being doomers anymore. We are inundated with doom right now. It's like, I mean, I don't think we live in a time, like, nearly as bad as, like, something like the, uh, the Black Plague, where, like, a third of Europe died. But that's just a matter of scale, right? We're, 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 as far as the, the emotional experience of it, it's pretty fucking bad. It's about as bad as you can get. It's certainly the worst any of us have ever seen. So for all of us, um, I mean, barring like immediate local tragedy, like if you live in an area that got bombed, you've seen in like a moment more. But I mean, as a globe, we none of like this generation hasn't seen anything like this on a global level. Yes, that's a good one. I recommend that book. Yes. Yep. It's a good idea to keep linking that throughout. People should read that book. I think it's a very good book. Um, very easy read. It's a, a short little pamphlet. Global. Cl this is an article by NPR. A major report warns that climate change is accelerating and humans must cut emissions now. Okay. Let's read through this real quick. Global climate change is accelerating, and human-caused emissions of greenhouse gases are the overwhelming cause, according to the landmark report released this Monday by the United Nations. There is still time to avoid catastrophic warming this century, but only if countries around, around the world stop burning fossil fuels as quickly as possible, the authors warn. The message to world leaders is more dire and more unequivocal than ever before. It is indisputable that human activities are causing climate change, says Co. Barrett the vice chair of the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and the senior advisor for climate at the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Each of the last four decades has been the warmest on record since pre-industrial times. The authors, nearly 200 leading climate scientists, hope that the report's findings will be front and center when world leaders meet for a major, major climate change conference in November. November? Oh, that's like months from now. At least I'll have time to think about it. The effects of the warming are obvious and deadly around the world. Heat waves, like we dealt with here, like you guys got to, you all got to watch me live through a, through a record heat wave. The, the two hottest days ever recorded in Seattle's his, history. You watched me, actually you didn't because I was, I literally couldn't stream. You saw my tweets about it, but you, I couldn't stream. It was too hot. And we're getting another one coming this week. Another heat wave of just crippling levels. Droughts and floods are killing people and disrupting lives around the world. Germany, 
and China are the best examples of that. Fires right now, have you all heard about the Dixie Fire in California? It is the biggest, it is now the biggest single fire in California history right now. Athens is on fire right now, okay? At any given point in time, um, it, at any given point in time, there were always disasters going on around the world. But right now, everything's happening at the same fucking time. The science is clear. Human caused, caused emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are the primary driver of such changes. Bill Yes, uh, there were literally, uh, I, I don't know, we'll, maybe we'll take a look at some of these pictures, but just so you know, in the Dixie Fire, literally towns were eaten overnight by the fire. It's still only, wait, I saw a report that said it was the first. It's the second largest. I heard it was the first because it was a single source, but maybe I'm wrong. Regardless, first or second, there you go. One of the two. Yes, literally, I, wa I, I, I saw it happen. I saw... Uh, a video of the fire just munching through buildings. It's horrifying. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? One of the biggest recent advances in climate research is in the field of so-called attribution science, which ties global warming to individual weather events such as hurricanes or heat waves. Scientists can now say with certainty that humans are causing more extreme weather, including heavy downpours and extended heat waves and droughts. This whiplash, this increase in both extreme wet and dry events, is projected to increase through the 20th, 21st century, says Kim Cobb, one of the report's authors and a paleoclimate scientist at Georgia Institute of Technology. This is the first time that paleoclimate researchers who study the climate of the past to understand how earth will change in the future have helped write every single chapter of the report their work put, helps put today's climate in perspective we can now say global surface temperatures are reaching levels not seen in over a hundred thousand years says Cobb the rate of warming since 1970 is higher than any 50 year period in the last 2,000 years the report also confirms that global sea level rise is accelerating. Globally, sea levels rose about 8 inches on average between 1901 and 2018, although the water rose much more in some places, including some cities on the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. Sea level rise is primarily driven by melting glaciers and Arctic ice. There's a lag between emissions and ice melting, which means that even if humans were to stop all greenhouse gas emissions today, sea levels would continue to rise for the next couple of decades. Now, you might go, uh, 8 inches eight inches what's so what's so bad about eight inches okay hold on for a second first of all i'd like to see you take eight inches and second of all when they say eight inches that means every single spot of shoreline is losing eight inches every one so you know how rainfall it's like two inches of rainfall oh it, when, when you're talking about that, that means everywhere. That means there were two inches on every level of every surface. Imagine that, but with sea levels. Just... <sighs> sea level change through the middle of this century has largely been locked in, says Bob Kopp, one of the report's authors and the director of the Institute of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences at Rutgers University. That means no matter what, people living in coastal areas will need to adapt to higher seas. Damn, look at these people just wading through the water here in this flooding. Scientists say it's not too late. Despite the disastrous prescriptions of our hotter Earth, the new report also makes it clear that it's not too late to curb global warming. The more humans reduce emissions this decade, the more livable Earth will be for the rest of the century and for many centuries to come. One of the big questions posed by world leaders is whether it's still possible to meet the targets set by the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. That agreement seeks to limit global warming well under 2 degrees Celsius and ideally keep it below 1.5. Earth is already about 1 degree Celsius hotter than it was in the late 1800s. Most of the biggest economies in the world are not on track to meet their temperature targets because they continue to rely too heavily on fossil fuels for electricity, transportation, and industry, including most polluting fuels such as coal. That includes the U.S., which has cut emissions very slowly in recent years. The new report finds that it's still possible to meet the targets set under the Paris Agreement, but it gets more and more difficult with each passing day. The authors used five theoretical scenarios to predict future global warming. The scenarios include different levels of greenhouse gas emissions, as well as economic and population growth and political collaboration. Under all five scenarios, Earth hits 1.5 degrees in the next two decades. 
20 years. Real quick, let me just do a quick site poll. Let me just do a quick site poll, okay? Let's do this. So, um, some of you haven't even been alive for 20 years yet. Some of you have just been alive for 20 years. Most of us in this chat are going to be alive in the next 20 years. And you are going to witness with your own eyes a catastrophic level of global warming. With your own eyes. You get to, you are going to get to see this unfold. Okay? And, um... And... <sighs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay? I know some people are like, fuck this, but hold on. I want you to listen to something. I'm about to tell you something that's not going to make you feel better right away. Okay? And that is... It ain't coming. Okay? The help's not coming. I'm sorry. It's not. It, is, it isn't coming for you. I'm really sorry. I'm very sorry to tell you this. It isn't coming. Okay? No one is going to save you. The government is not coming for you. Uh, what's the term? What was the word that they said? Uh, well, there was this song, uh, you know, Parasite Eve by uh, Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, the end has arrived. We cannot save you. Enjoy the ride. And there's a lot of people these days who are... who talk about stuff with a lot of indignance, okay? Um... Like, they're saying, oh, like, what's the... And I'm not trying to call out anybody here. And I don't think poorly of these people. I understand where it comes from. But you see people... Hey, Merrick, good to see you. You see a lot of people out there right now saying, what's the point of socialism if we don't increase our quality of life? What What's the point of socialism if we don't get to have video games and, um, and, uh, and iPhones? And the answer is, you get to not die. You, you get to not die. And I hate to say that, but they're not going... There's, the government isn't going to help you. The government hasn't helped you in COVID. And now they've got COVID and climate change. It's not happening. It's not coming. And guess what? If it does, that's great. But don't count on it. Don't count on it. Because... They didn't... Let me ask you this. Over Many of you have been here watching my show through uh, Let's Chat environmental fuck-ups. Uh, sure, I'd be open to that uh, in a little bit, but I need to get through this section first. We'll, we'll talk about that. I have a lot of people who've been wanting to talk to me about this stuff, which I'm fine with, but uh, I, have to, I have to work through the segment first, okay? Um... Illinois legislature is literally failing to address climate change right now. They could be saving 15 gigatons of CO2. Do you think we can survive a climate change apocalypse? Yep. Absolutely. Is there even a point in trying to plan out a career? Here's the thing. Plan intelligently. And also, remember that the purpose of a plan is not to go according to plan. It's so that you've thought out possibilities and can think on your feet. Nothing ever goes according to plan. Plans are designed to get you to think about what could happen so that when shit does happen, you could act on your feet. Okay? And there's another thing, too. Uh, something that... Um, something that somebody... That, 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 uh, that people need to think about. And uh, I read an article about this. Um like like a year ago on this stream that was called like uh like what if we're it was like what it was like or a thread or something it was like what if we're living through a collapse right now and i think um like a lot of people have been talking about this recently in fact i even think i was i was like credit to doe doe was talking about this this morning but ever, a lot of people are thinking about this um about this idea of like what if we're living through a collapse what if a collapse doesn't look like mad max what if uh what if a collapse looks different than we thought it did. 
What if it is a slow process with random bursts of acceleration that are very hard to predict? And I think that that's kind of where we're at, right? We're seeing a inability to deal with disease. We're seeing an inability to maintain infrastructure. We're seeing an, an unwillingness for the government to do anything but watch as people die. Well, that's not entirely true. There are there are things that have collapsed very quickly. Um, and sometimes it's surprising. But um, society and free fall. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. But the thing is, is that like, I think a lot of people think like you're going to like, it's going to be like, a, well, you know, p the, the vision of, of like societal collapse has been for a long time, like oh, nuclear bombs go down and everything gets blowed up. And then you hide in a hole for a while and then you come out and there's just a bunch of skeletons that are holding all of their riches that you can easily loot. Um, and, you know, uh, environmental storytelling skeletons or whatever. Um, but but the, that's not really how it goes, right? Like, what we're seeing is that there's this, uh, this consolidation of power by these giant corporations that have a lot of control. Um, they are making moves. They are deregulating. Sometimes they're just ignore. They just ignore regulations because they can. Um, and we also see that governments aren't succeeding at uh, achieving their own goals because they're too hitched to their own, uh, capitalist economies. We will not see the end of fossil fuel usage. No one is going to do that. Any country that decides to stop cutting fossil fuels takes a disadvantage has to take away their position of power the fossil fuels are used to generate the wealth they're comparatively cheap and they're dirty and they because they're cheap they can use them to make a lot of money it's it's not going to happen Do you have any thoughts about how we should be prepping for something like this? I feel like it's very different than what doomsday preppers do. You want to know the best way to prep for this? Fucking read. Seriously. Read. You want to learn how to fucking... Uh, I'm sorry, I know. And this is coming from me. I fucking hate reading. But I'm serious. People need to go and fucking read about other people's experiences with this go read stuff about about people surviving through national natural disasters go read stories of how communities pulled themselves together through a natural disaster you know it's funny everybody jokes about the an i even joke about anarchists not wanting to read but i'm gonna tell you a secret anarchists read more than anybody else it's just they're smart enough to read tiny books that are like this big they pick up a book that's like four pages long and all the ideas are there. They're like, oh, shit, that was a great book. And they're like, oh, and then like a Marxist comes along. It's like, I just finished reading a 3,000 page book. What about you? And the anarchist is like, I read a pamphlet. But who cares, right? Um, but seriously, that's the first step. The first step is to start gathering information. Um, like some people are going to live in, uh, some people live in very immediately affected areas right now. Um... Sock done left. Have you read about decoupling? I think th that the evidence there suggests against hard climate doomerism. Um, uh, no, I haven't read about decoupling. Um, and uh, if you think that that's the case, uh, you have a faith in God that I do not have. Um, because I don't think that even if there is a solution, even if there is a potential solution, and there are, there are many many that's not a okay look I, i'm sorry i hate to tell you this that's not a hope pill man you people are like dying to just eat the soma pill aren't you you're like i will live in the pod i will eat the soma pill i will i will live it i will i will have my uh my waste products sucked out of me by vacuum okay <laughs> don't, don't you don't woo wee to that
One, I will live in the pod. Listen, okay, honestly, uh, I hope we don't have to live in pods, but I don't think that's that's uh, that's going to do it. Okay, but hold on a second. Um, the pamphlet contained info on irrigation and edible plants. Yes! Great! See? Now, hold on a second, though. I want you to understand the difference. Yeah, I'll take a look at this. Hold on a second. Um... Uh, you will eat the bugs. I will do... Listen, you want to know? Wait, are you fucking ready for this? Watch this. All right, fucking chatters. Listen the fuck up, okay? I want you to listen to me and look into my goddamn eyes. I will do whatever I have to to survive. You understand that? I will eat your leftist ass. Okay? All right? I will... I, I, I obey the number one rule of do not die! The real honest solution to the climate crisis is an immediate and serious reduction in population, pollution, and land use for humans, which is basically not going to happen. Even then, the solution would take thousands of years to... to I disagree with that. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second, everybody. Let's talk about something, okay? Okay, I want to make sure I can try and keep a hold on this, okay? Um, The solution... There isn't... A solution okay the idea that there is a solution is great man theory uh elon musk epic reddit chungus bacon nonsense okay that is if you believe there is a solution i've got a better book for you okay i'm ready i'm i'm unironic right here okay listen to me if you believe there is a solution to climate change i have a better book for you to read it's called the bible okay Unironic. I'm going to unironically recommend Christianity to you. If you think that there is a single solution that is going to solve everything, you will have a lot more fun being a Christian. I'm serious. You'll have way much more fun being a Christian. You get to believe in crazy angels. There's fucking devils and shit in here. You get to hear stuff like this. Then Joab and the troops with him advanced to fight the Arameans, and they fled before him. When the Ammonites saw that the Arameans were fleeing, they fled before Abishai and went inside the city. So Joab returned from fighting the Ammonites and then came to Jerusalem. After the Arameans... Or after the Arameans saw that they had been routed by Israel, they regrouped, then had a desert, and the Arameans brought from beyond the river. They went to Halam with Shobach and the commander of Haladezer's army leading them. When David was told of this, he gathered all of Israel, crossed the Jordan, and went to Halam. The Arameans formed their battle lines to meet David and fought against him, but they fled before Israel, and David killed 700 of their charioteers and 40,000 of their foot soldiers. Holy shit! Dude! 40,000? Okay. I'm being a little bit silly here, okay? I I'm being a little silly, but uh, here, I'm opening these articles, I promise. I'm not I'm not uh, dis disregarding your things. Okay, hold on. Okay. Where he eats a scroll? What about the time where, what about the time where, was it Ezekiel? Was it Ezekiel? Who was it? The who was the guy? No, it was Elijah. Elijah was the guy who like um a like a bunch of kids came out of a town and made fun of him, and they called him bald, and then um they called him bald, and then he got so mad that he called that he summoned a bear. He used his uh he 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 used his his god powers to summon a bear to kill the children because they called him bald and made fun of his shitty beard. Like that's a real Bible story, by the way. Yeah. Oh, he said two bears? I didn't even remember that it was two. Go up, ye bald head. Exactly. So, um... Oh, oh, it's not... It, they were... Emi their emissions were that of horses. And their, their, uh... Their, uh... What was it called? Their... Yeah, they were... They had... They had horse dicks. Um... Yes, yes, there is sucked and left. That's a real thing. Um, when the the tearing of the veil, uh, there was the, apparently the dead rose from the ground. Yes, that's a real thing. Anyway, okay. Something you should know about um, disasters is that uh, most disasters uh, aren't. A hundred percent lethal, okay. Um, 
even in really bad disasters, a lot of people survive. And a lot of people are going to survive through all of this. There isn't, it's not like there's like a, it's not like mother nature has like a death note and is just like, okay, everybody in America. And then you just all die in 60 seconds. Like that's just not how it works. This is stuff that happens. There is wait, there is time to react to things. There are people can move. People will slip out all these sorts of things. Um, people will adapt, etc. People aren't going anywhere, but here's the thing. There's no one going to help you besides the people that you that you work with the, there might be some random chance of like uh, like who knows maybe someday i will have uh, a a caravan of uh of of impo buses that are all that all look like mama molds and i'll drive around america and pick people up and you can live in the bus and i'll feed you food or some shit like that don't don't count on that okay please don't fucking count on it what have you sent me? Why have you sent me this? I don't believe that you sent me a climate report. I don't think you did. <laughs> okay, all right, that was good. All right, that was good. Hold on, I'll, I'll bring it up on the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Reading up the climate report. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh Jesus. Okay, yeah. Um oops. Um okay, that yeah, that was definitely the climate report. Thank you. Um but what I'm trying to say here is that uh the government isn't going to come help you. I'm I'm sorry it's not going to happen. Um the chance of the government doing anything in time to help anybody meaningfully is so unlikely. They couldn't even do it for COVID and COVID is nothing in comparison to the climate. And what this means is that people need to start thinking for themselves. And I don't mean like I don't mean bootstrapping. I mean think. I mean you need to start thinking today about how you're going to make the world a better place than the one that you currently live in. Yes, you, all of you who are watching right now, while you are pressing the like button on my stream and the subscribe button on my channel, you are going to be thinking about Jesus. What, do, what can I actually do? What can I do together with other people to make the world better? How do we react to something like this? Okay. Did I say Jesus? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, trans girl therapist. Much love to you as well. Likewise, uh, thank you so much, Emily. But that is that is what did I say, Jesus? What did I say, Jesus? Did I just go like Jesus Christ? Oh, I don't even know. Whatever. Fuck. Think about Jesus. No, I want you to think today about how you're going to live, how you're going to uh, take care of the people around you, who you're going to take care of, who is valuable to you. If there are people online that you're connected with that are valuable to, to you, build those connections, strengthen those connections, take care of each other. And, and this is why I think that it's the opposite of the hyper individualist, but it isn't this, um, it isn't this like eco fascist vision of like a nation. That's just like, we will survive climate change. It's saying, no, 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 hold on a second. All of us, we're not the state. We're not a nation. When, when, when the president gets up and says, my fellow Americans, they're not talking about you. He doesn't give a fucking shit about you. You think Joe Biden gives a shit about you? Joe Biden will step over your fucking corpse to get his little ice cream cone. And you know it! You know he'll fucking do that. You're gonna, you, if you want to be the fucking storytelling, uh, if you want to be the environmental storytelling skeleton that Joe Biden steps over in order to get his new ice cream cone, uh, that's, that's the, that's the world in which you, um, you, uh, are going to hang out or, or that's the world in which you wait on the government. Okay. Because it's not coming. 
it fucking isn't coming. I'm just telling you right now. It, you want your audience to get educated. Let's talk about the processes and science behind climate change, including agricultural practices, carbon drawdown, and accommodation space. Um, I think that uh, this is where I disagree with the... Um, this is where I disagree with this idea that we're going to solve climate change. Um, we can science all of the potential solutions that we want to. We can imagine all kinds of, of, of pipe dream solutions. And we do that all the time. You see this with uh, people like, like you see this with Tesla. You see this with the people who think that we're going to go uh, colonize Mars. You see this with people who think we're going to invent uh, uh, nuclear fusion technology in the next like 10 years um, educating people it is one thing to educate people and, and by the way I'm not like I don't I'm not anti-intellectual even in the slightest I think learning things is super fucking valuable however educating people about like soil carbon um, at reacquisition or uh, what solutions that we need for climate change when none of those can possibly be implemented is a is an exercise in futility. And I, I hate to say it. I'm not saying your knowledge is useless, but to focus on that is it's the wrong gamble, in my opinion. Most of us, uh, most of us are going to have to accept that our lives are going to change soon. Okay? Um, what do you mean they can't possibly be implemented? Um, okay. What do, you, what do I mean when they can't possibly be implemented? Nuclear fusion? Good luck. Even if we invented nuclear fusion today, um, we wouldn't be in, in enough time uh, environment seattle says call me a pipe dreamer but solutions do exist today if we can think and reject the controlled opposition that fossil fuel corporations have foisted upon our political system we need public power urbanization and jobs for caretaking our environment it will not be easy but it is possible um i uh i agree with you um that there are solutions that we can work on and if you're in a position to work on a solution like that please do anything like that can help but for most people the solution doesn't lie in uh legislation the solution doesn't lie in um in petitioning the government the solution lies in sitting down thinking about how you and how you are going to make sure that you and yours stay well, healthy, connected, socializing as the world changes around us. Nizztastic says, the worst part is that due to the delay in cause and effect, we're currently experiencing the consequence of our emissions from the turn of the millennium. Even if we completely cut our emissions, things are going to be get, are going to get so much worse over the next 10 to 20 years. People need to start preparing for this. People need to start looking out for one another. Yes, I agree. And this is what I was going to say is that um, no matter how bad, no, ba no matter how bad you want to, to, to fight or, pr or profess for a world in which, um, we get to keep our iPhones and we get to keep our SUVs and everybody gets to have everything that you always wanted all the time forever. And you get to have, uh, your Funko Pops and you get to have your, uh, corn drinks and whatever. Um. The reality is, um, the reality is that you're not going to. You might, you might, you individually might, but you as an audience, all 400, 500 of you that are watching right now, how many are watching? We got 400 in YouTube chat and we have another 100 in Twitch chat. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you being willing to listen to me talk about this. It really means the world to me. Okay. Um, so all 500 of you that are listening to this, the vast majority of you, your light, your quality of life is going to change. Your quality of life is going to go down. 
whether you want it to or not. It's not a matter of policy. It's not a matter of whether you think about politics the right way or whether people advocate for it or not. I could shut the fuck up right motherfucking now and never do another stream again. And the fact would still remain that a fuckload of you are not going to get to have the same modern luxuries that you enjoy right now, 10 years from now. And in fact, if you don't believe me, look at your life 10 years ago. How many of you are better off, like, on a... Now, I'm happier as a person than I was 10 years ago. But 10 years ago, I was working a sales job where I was making fucking bank. That was just as the economy started to fuck. How many of you 10 years ago who can remember this were doing... Were truly worse off on a financial or economic level than you are now? Well, some of you are already there, like Queen Laura says. Jack Nicholson, what is even your point in the stream? You've titled it How Not to Doom, but you're dooming and you don't want to discuss the science because the knowledge doesn't matter, but you want us to build connections to community. Then you talk about how it advances in our lives over the next decade while saying, while simultaneously saying we can't have it all. Okay. I'm going to give you a second here to just calm your fucking, calm your fucking nuts. Okay. This is the shit that I fucking hate. Okay? You're contradictory as fuck. Dude, where did you get this? Where, you said you wanted to have, like, a, a, a conversation? Is this, like, are you trying to, like, debate bro your way into a conversation? Because you're about to debate bro your way into getting your knowledge, your supposedly valuable knowledge, uh, fucking banned out of the community. How about that? I've been getting fucking stunlocked by chat for the last hour. Legitimately don't know what your point is. Well, try listening, egghead. Hey, fucking pull your fucking head out of your ass, you fucking pencil-pushing Poindexter. Fucking, oh, did you know that technically, if you do the mathematics on paper, um, if you punch it into your calculator like this, um, well, you know that technically, if it was possible for us to pass a bill through Mitch McConnell, we would be able to, uh, technically calculate, um, a, using sponge technology that has only been, um, practiced in one university. Well, we could implement this across the world if every corporation in the world agreed to produce environmental carbon sponges. Yeah, pull your dick out of your fucking TI-82, okay? I'm happy that there are some people in chat who have a little bit of fucking faith in me here. I'm okay. I'm happy there's a little people who have just a drop, just a fucking drop of faith in what I'm talking about here. The thing that I'm po trying to point out to people, okay, let me give you this, okay? Um, let me, let me give you an example. What, what people who come in here and say things like, well, there's technically a way for us to, you know, we need to educate people on how to, on, on how it's possible if we can pass the legislation and get corporations on board that we can stop climate change. You're not stopping climate change. We haven't stopped it in a hundred years. It's not going to stop. The incentives of every single society on the planet right now are aligned against you. You are not, we're not stopping climate change. Climate change is here. Now, there are actions we can take that will help us to make it less bad. And there are actions we can take to ensure that people survive climate change and that we don't repeat the same problems. But the problem is that the average person, even if they knew the exact science necessary to recapture carbon, into the world has no path of action to doing that. I know one of the most environmentally hope-pilled things is the declining price of solar panels to the point that it's cheaper than coal. This will start. This will hopefully sharply shift the incentive of companies towards stopping ch climate change. Uh, look, SDL, I appreciate your your optimism, but I think this is the type. I think I think that some of the optimism that is being put forward in chat is harmful optimism. Okay. And let me explain this real quick. Um, let me exp let me explain this real quick, okay? If you're talking to somebody and um, both of their legs are torn off, and they're like, and and they can't see anything because a, 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 their eyes are full of the blood that's coming from their head, okay? And they're like, oh my god, oh my god, what's the situation, okay? And you're like, 
Ah, oh, dude! <laughs> Look, it's no problem. Uh, you know, if, uh... If we could just climb, if we could just get you from where you are with n neither of your legs, if we could just get you to a hospital, you'd be totally fine. All we need to do is get you to the world's most advanced hospital. And we'll be able to reattach your legs. Or you go, um, I hate to tell you this. Both of your legs are missing and we need to sew you up right here. We need to make sure that you don't die right now because there is no hospital nearby. There is no medical expert nearby, and we don't have the money necessary to do that. That's the situation that we're in right now. The situation that we're in is uh, our legs have been blown off, and we're nowhere near a hospital. We have to figure out how to live through that situation if we can. Hey, Lady Kelgana, with all due respect, Lady Kelgana, the reason why we're talking about this is because it's a topic I fucking care about, okay? If this, if this stream makes you feel anxious or depressed, um, that's not my problem. You can turn it off. You can... All I do on this stream is take people's criticism for the shit that I think about and decide to share with you. You can turn it off. You can bury your head in the sand if you want to. Go for it. It's You're literally welcome to do that, okay? You are completely welcome to do that. Okay? I recognize that there's a lot of... of uh, I, I recognize that this is a very heavy topic. But we need to be realistic about the situation that we're in um, and not. And like I said, if you want to if you want to buy into if you want to buy into a um, like if you want to buy into some uh, like a fantasy, a comforting fantasy. I have a book for you right here. I've already said this once, but I'm going to say it again. The Bible is you will have a much easier time convincing yourself that the Bible that God will come and rapture you away in the same way that you'll be able to convince yourself that Elon Musk or some other profit driven firm is, uh, is going to, uh, is going to swoop in and invent a magical technology that will save you. I agree. Listen, solar tech is fucking cool. Okay. Solar tech is awesome. A lot of these things are super awesome technologies, and I highly recommend we embrace them to the best ability that we can. Ourselves. Ourselves. Ourselves, okay? Because unless you right now are in a position where you can actually get your legislation to implement solar panels, then what the fuck does the solar technology even mean to you? If you can't actually do that, then the existence of some of of some abstract solar technology means nothing. If you can't afford it, if you aren't in a position where you can do it, you can vote when November comes. You can uh, do other political actions. And what I'm saying is that uh, what I'm saying here is that we need to start thinking more about what we can actually do together instead of um, thinking about what the government might do in in an imaginary circumstance